I keep telling folks, if, if he's dealing with brown people like this, what do you think he's going to do with the dark and straight people like me? I want you to understand, this is not about the wall. If he could build a wall around, you know, east side of Detroit, he would try it. And it might be next. So don't get confused. Don't say dismiss them. Don't say, well, they don't need to be here. Don't say, it's not about them. It's about what he is trying to do in terms of America. It's about the money also. I always, I believe that. My mother always uh, has shared with me, uh, Geneva, follow the money. This is a man who is talking about immigrants, and he has been hiring immigrants since he's had a hotel. Absolutely. And knew it and knows it. Mm -hmm. I mean, so is, this is not about... Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to save the world, and, and they're sex offenders, and they're committing murders and all that. And also, it's political. He knows, and everyone, and the stats will say, in 20 years, the, the country will be brown. In, in the old school days, at the, at the kitchen table, and my mama's kid, grandmother's table, they used to say it's going to be mixed. You know what I'm talking about. It's going to be mixed. That's what they used to say. But we, we, we you know, when you know politically correct, you say brown all. It's going to be a brown community, and those brown people will vote. They will vote. It's about money, racism, and who's going to be in power, and who can elect those people to be in power. And if they don't look like him, 45, they're in trouble. He's already experiencing that. He knows more. He knows what we know here. So don't dismiss those people that are there. Don't say that they should do it the right way. They are doing it the right way. They are. Let me put it this way. I'm a, uh, her name is, what is her name, uh, Darwin? Ann Coulter. Here is a, a woman named Ann Coulter who is a friend, just so everybody will know, of 45, who said even poor whites are being scammed by 45. Case closed. We're going to move on to something really important and some really important people. <laughs> We're going to move on. I have my co-host here, Darwin Griffin, and he's going to introduce our guest. And we're going to talk about, and I, once again, if you have some history you want to share with us in your family, I want you to share it with me. Guess what? Our guest is probably going to connect the dots between somebody he knows or what he knows <laughs> about in terms of that whole situation. But the phone number here is 313-778-7600. Well, one thing that I say is it's, it's always a pleasure to get an opportunity to have Michael Himmeltel here with us. Oh, thank you. And the thing is that every time that I see Michael at any event, you know, we've had some things that we've done, some grits and politics. Yeah. We had Michael as one of the panelists. Right. And Michael always gets the mm. audience engaged. <laughs> always gets the audience thinking. And that's the main thing that we want Michael to do tonight. Right. Like you said, all the people that listen in tonight, we want them to start thinking. And just as you said, Livonia, Black History Month is every second of the day. It's not just in February. It's every And it's for everybody. Day. And it's for everybody. Right. You know, because the history books don't include a lot of things that I'm sure Michael's going to disseminate sure. to us. So without further ado, I know you didn't, you didn't tune in to hear me. You tune in to hear Michael, and you can hear me and Lavonia every Friday night. But you definitely got some information coming from Mr. Michael Imhotep. Michael, hey. it's a pleasure to have you right. on the show. Hey, right, thanks for right. Me. But you have an event coming up. Yeah, sure, sure. Right, and um, you said how black men dominated uh -huh. horse racing. Horse racing. Yeah, I'm doing a double lecture on uh, uh, Saturday, mm -hmm. February 16th, and mm -hmm. then Knowledge Cafe, mm -hmm. 71 Oakman Avenue. Mm -hmm. So we'll deal with uh, some of the history of um, African American um, jockeys. How yes. black men dominated yes. horse racing. They sure did. And uh, I have a whole the, book on it. Yeah, because we used mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, a lot of the early Kentucky Derbies were won by African American That's right. jockeys. And uh, this is something that uh, was a carryover from slavery. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also, so we'll deal with some of that history. And then also we'll deal with Rosewood. Um, uh, the history of the Rosewood Massacre in 1923, mm -hmm. how an entire black town That's right. was destroyed because a woman lied. Mm -hmm. The white woman. That's right. Lie. Okay, so think we've seen. About, we've seen think the, about Emmett Till's situation. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so right. we've seen the right. movie right. Rosewood. It came out in 1997, right? right? Mm -hmm. Directed by John Singleton. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I right. do is deal with the real history mm -hmm. of Rosewood and, right. and compare it to the movie because some of the things were um, true in the movie and some things right. were were not true. Right. And, how, and I how, much was, how much was true and how much was? Um, you know, I, okay. I would say right. maybe 70, 80 percent of what we saw in the movie was true. A lot of the characters were true. Okay. Uh, the character uh, that Bing Rains played of man, that's a fictitious character. That character didn't exist. 
Uh, so he may have been a composite mm -hmm. character because the the actual history of what happened in Rosewood is 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 kind of different than what they show in the movie, right? There, there um, it, it is true that you had the uh, the uh, a white guy who was the general store owner, okay, who uh, played by John Voight's character. Th that's true, and it is true that you had uh, the two men who owned the uh, the train. And they helped some uh, children and women escape. That's true, also. But uh, when we look at Ving Rhames' character, he was a former um, World War One soldier. Okay, and he he comes into the town at a time when they're looking for this Jesse Hunter. Okay, okay? and what happened was um, the you had a white woman named Fanny Taylor, and she was cheating on her husband with a white man. She, she's white. Her husband's white. She's 22 years old. She's cheating on her husband with a white man. Her lover uh, beats her, and then she lies and says a black man broke in mm -hmm. and beat her. Now, right. she didn't say he raped her, beat her. but, but, but <laughs> assault became twisted into sexual assault or rape, okay? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's a, a, there was a, a, a chain gang nearby, and there was an escaped prisoner from the chain gang, a black prisoner named Jesse Hunter. So they think the authorities think that Jesse Hunter is the one that beat mm -hmm, her, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the black people in the town of uh, Rosewood... Tell them what Rosewood is, exactly. Well, I'm Rosewood is in Florida, and, right. and Sumner, Florida, right. was where the white people live, right. which is a few miles from Rosewood, Florida. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a little town. There's a population of about 200 people, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and a lot of the black people in Rosewood knew that she was lying and cheating on her husband. Of course they did. Okay? And a lot of, and a lot of white people knew it right, also. Because right. when you see the movie, it gets to a point where the, the, uh, the, the men are standing, right men standing around drunk, and they all admit they knew That's right. that his wife was cheating on they him. They, they just wanted to, to kill him. some Negroes. That's right. Right? So uh, you end up having uh, an entire town wiped out. And you're going to have a lot of them who are going to flee. A lot of them are going to be children who flee. Uh, now, the one care, the one boy in the movie named Arnett Doctor, okay, he's a real character. He's the one who came forward years later to really lead uh, a group of survivors to be able to get some type of compensation also for this as How well. How did they get out? Let's talk about some of the things that happened in that how they get up? Well, well, they were able. Escape. Well, well, that group that Arnett mm -hmm. was with, they yes. were able to get out because the. The two white men that owned the train, okay. they um, came and they, uh, they you had um, the children and women, they were hiding in the swamp, mm -hmm. okay? And they're going to come and put them on the train and take them to a nearby city, okay? So some of them are going to be able to get out that way, all right? Um, and some others are going to go right. to nearby towns. Right. Now, when we look at the official count, it's hard to get a uh, it's hard to get a read on how many were actually Absolutely. killed. The official count was eight African American, basically mm -hmm. African Americans yeah, killed. But it's it's highly possible that there were more killed because just like if we look at the um, the Black Wall Street attack, June first, right. nineteen twenty three, right? The official count from the uh, Red oh, Cross sure. was three hundred, yes. um, but. We do know that some of them were wounded mm -hmm. and go to nearby towns and die, okay? okay. See, the, the and, and when we look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Red Cross set up a makeshift hospital in Booker T. Washington House, uh, High School there in Tulsa, and they're tending to the wounded, okay? So the Red Cross put the count at 300. We know it's probably higher, but don't know exactly how, how of course many. not, because we yeah. weren't counted. You know, we, we, even though we were considered property, um, when they wanted to uh, no, kill us off, we, you know, we didn't count. Well, this is after slavery. Yeah. I'm talking about right, that, right. slavery. Chattel slavery ends in 1865. We're talking about 1921, 1923. Right, right, this right. is after World War One. Right. World War One is critical. 1914, yes, 1918, uh, because um, the, during World War One we start the Great Migration, basically about 1915. Some sources say 1916, and. Uh, 1919, the year after yes, World War One ends, is called the Red Summer. Mm -hmm. it's, and James Weldon Johnson, who wrote the Black National Anthem, because we yes. knew the white one was not for us, um, the, the, he yeah. called it the Red yeah. Summer because the streets were America yeah. uh, of America were flowing with blood because there were over 25 major race riots in this country. Because what happened was no, during yeah. World War yeah. One, you had five million years. men who went to go fight in World War sure. One. Most of them were white. Mm -hmm. About 370,000 of them mm -hmm. African Americans. So when they leave to go fight, these white men have jobs. 
when they come back, their jobs are being filled by African Americans and immigrants coming to this country because there was a huge labor vacuum. Sure, it was. Huge labor right. vacuum, right? So they come back, they can't find jobs, right. but they have skills on how to fight and how to kill. So you mm -hmm. have these race riots that break out, That's right. and you have these retire, you have these World War One veterans that come out, come back who are black, mm -hmm. and they're coming back, and they're saying we're not dealing with this segregation anymore. Okay, and they're fighting back. Mm -hmm. You have some of them who lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right. during uh, during the attack on Tulsa, and they were armed and they fought back and shot back also. Mm -hmm. So the way that we are, are taught about uh, the Tulsa race riot, like they just laid down and shot. No, mm -hmm. when when Dick Rowland, the 19 year old uh, brother who was accused of uh, assaulting uh, Sarah Page, when he was in the uh, sheriff's jail. You had a group of about 200 armed black men who go to the jail to back the sheriff up to protect Dick Rowland from a mob of white men to keep him from being taken out and lynched. Right. So the, so the way this whole story has been told, like we just laid down, no, that's not the case. We, right. we fought back and shot back. Right. We have to take a break, um, a, a break right now. Right. This is 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. I told you to put on your seatbelt, you know, and I, I, I still think of people that they still saw African Americans at that time, even in the 20s, mm -hmm. 30s, and sometimes the 60s, as slaves. And the mentality of mm -hmm. how they treat us, I still say that is what we deal with when we talk about racism today. It is something that's the undercurrent that's of everything. That's why we stop calling ourselves that's slaves. Right, that's right. Got to stop it. We are at 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. This is the Livonia Perriman Show. You are going to go to www.910 a.m. Superstation, and we are going to encourage you to call in, 313-778-7600, 313-778-7600. When we come 19, back, we're going to take a couple of calls, and we're going to continue this discussion. Yes. This is Jalen. <laughs> <laughs>